late April 2020, Google decided to make Google Meet available to anyone to use for free. That's excellent news for people who want to use a secure and scalable video conferencing app. But of equal importance is the fact that the company already had built paths to Google Meet within other apps. You can collaborate, then move to Meet when the situation merits a real-time discussion. Here are seven different paths to Google Meet. Note that in some cases, a G Suite administrator will need to adjust settings. And for more details on each of the following paths, see my article at techrepublic.com. First, to start a video conference now, go to meet.google.com or open the Google Meet apps, which are available for Android and iOS devices. Second, when a conversation can wait, use Google Calendar to add video conferencing to an event. Third, you can enable chat within Gmail, which then gives you fast access to Google Meet. That makes it possible to try to talk instead of typing yet another email. Fourth, a teacher may enable a Google Meet link to be used by students in Google Classroom. The link won't work unless the teacher starts a Meet session. Once enabled, the link displays on both the Classroom Stream and Classwork pages. Fifth, people who use Google Chat may add a video meeting for either individual or group video conferences. This makes it easier for teams to move from discussion threads to video. Sixth, if you already have a Meet session active, you may open Google Slides on an Android or iOS device, select Present, then add the meeting ID. This lets you present from Slides to Meet. Seventh, and finally, if you're fortunate enough to have the Google Jamboard device, you may have it join Google Meet sessions too. By the way, even without the Jamboard hardware, you may use Google Meet's Present option to share a jam from a tab to Meet on the web. What paths do you most often take to Google Meet? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I'm Andy Wolber, at AWolber on Twitter, for Tech Republic.